Please subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos. Hi, um, my name is Rafael and I'm uh, here to present um, a spreadsheet uh, that we developed here at the University of Toledo to help create um, fragility functions uh, more easily. This project was actually done by a undergraduate summer student. Uh, her name is, as you can see here, Shivani Gandaj. She came from uh, India to do his, this study here with us during the summer. She was assisted by me and also Dr. Gunner. And here in the About tab you can uh, see more, especially on how to cite that if you want to cite this um, spreadsheet. Um, here you can also see the link uh, to it. Uh, you can see um, all of our names, uh, Gandage names, my name, and Dr. Gunner. Uh, you can also come to the Dr. Gunner website under the publications uh, tab and uh, in the spreadsheets you will find um, this spreadsheet li listed that you can just click download, save it whatever you want and you will be faced with this spreadsheet. So the purpose of this spreadsheet was to make life easier for people who want to uh, transform their data uh, into a fragility function. So the spreadsheet itself is really simple, but it really helps uh, ease the task and also uh, speed uh, the actual generation of the fragility functions. Um, at first, we have a instructions and an example tab here. Um, if you ever get in doubt of what this um, fields mean, you can read this little description here or uh, come to the instructions tab where you will see basically everything you need to have in mind before running your analysis and also an example here in which we will see um, how to fill all the, all the fields if you still have a, a doubt. So the purpose of this spreadsheet was to make it as generalized as possible so that uh, you can turn any type of analysis if, if whether it's a earthquake analysis, a wind storm analysis, tsunami analysis, anything can be uh, plugged in here and it will create you the fragility function for that. So we start with the um, total number of analysis that we analyzed. Uh, for example, using the example that we have here as a reference, we did 10 different earthquake intensities. So we put that 10 here. You can also read these little tips here, which will give you a uh, better idea. Uh, what we varied in this uh, analysis were the earthquake acceleration and the unit of this um, intensity that we varied was Gs. So when we create the, when we click on the create data table, uh, the spreadsheet will ask us um, what were these ten. Um, intensities that we analyzed. So if you look at the example tab, uh, you will see that this is where we would uh, input this value. So just for the reference here, let's put some rather um, random numbers. Uh, 1.72, 2.5. So now that we specify which um, analysis, which intensities that we analyzed, um, now the spreadsheet asks us uh, how many analyses were performed for each intensity. So for example, in our case, I think we had mm, 11. So for each of these um, intensities, which were 0.3 G, we ran a, a 11 earthquake histories that match that acceleration. So we would input that in here. And then after this, this spreadsheet starts to ask us about uh, the engineering demand parameter, what we, um, what we are interested in analyzing in our structure. In our case, we um, got data based on the drift of our little structure that we had. Uh, the unit for that is percentage. And now it asks us how many performance levels we want to consider. In our case, we can do three performance levels. I think it's the same as in the example. So clicking again on the button nine, it will create a similar table to the above one. Uh, asking us what, what is this three um, levels that we want to consider and you will see that um, both here and in this table it will fill this which 
whatever we input in this um, cells right here. So let's just put some uh, random numbers just for the sake of this demonstration. I'm not gonna go all the way, uh, especially the part where we put the, da the data here, but just so you know uh, what, it, uh, what it is to input in those cells. So the last two are the minimum intensity and the maximum intensity fragility function. So this is basically, if you imagine that the fragility function is a xy graph in which the y-axis is the probability of exceeding the limits, the performance level, and the x-axis is uh, whatever the intensity that you're analyzing, which in, in our case is the acceleration, is asking us uh, how wide do we want, from what range do we want our x-axis to go. So we can start at 0g, so basically no earthquake, to uh, any earthquake that we want. You will see here that our analysis is stopped at 2.5 Gs. So you would um, usually think that this should be 2.5, but since the fragility function is basically a equation, is a log normal equation, um, we can extrapolate this if we want. So even though we, we don't have, for example, three Gs in our actual analysis, we can use the function that we created um, based on all this data here from 0 0.3 to 2.5 and ex extrapolate it to uh, three Gs. So that's what these two boxes here uh, indicate. So lastly, we create the create input table. And once it generates, it will prompt you with this uh, message. Once you click OK, you we will be able to see the actual table. So here it will create a table that will span all the intensities that we um, specify and for each of those intensities it will as it will have 11 fields in which we will put the the drifts that we uh, obtain from our analysis so you will see that for example this one is 11 uh, fields and the same thing happens for all the intensities that we specify and this is where we will input our table uh, our data so uh, I don't have the data right now, but we can look at the example tab, what this would look like. Uh, you will see that um, the blue color fields are where we actually input something. And uh, the other color field, which is usually white, uh, we don't, it's automatically generated by the spreadsheet itself. So if you imagine that we input that data there in, in the actual tab, once we click this button here, generate the fragility data, um, it would calculate the second, uh, actually third column. Uh, it would generate the, the other parameters and it would create both this um, table here, which is the actual fragility function data points. And it will also give you some um, statistical and, and data here that you can use uh, if you want such as the, the curve fitting of your data um, and everything. But the, the main part is the fragility curves right here. Uh, in the example tab itself, you can copy anything. Actually, you can copy um, cells. You cannot change them um, because we didn't want, we, we, also, we wanted that the example be the same one forever uh, unless we want to change it. Um, but in here, you are free to do anything. You can modify all the cells and everything. But in, the, in this one, we can't even copy this graph. But in the actual generator, you, you'll be able to copy, modify if you want a different uh, parameter here. You can copy this curve to any other software, save in any other format that you like. But uh, we believe this is, this is an easy, uh, fast, and intuitive way to uh, generate fragility functions. One more thing is that once you're done, if you want to run another one, if you made a mistake or something, you can always click here on the reset, spread, reset spreadsheet uh, and everything will be made uh, clean. So once you click OK, it will reset everything and everything starts anew. So I hope this video helps you um, in any way in your studies, whatever you're doing. Um, and. Uh, that's it, thank you very much.